We'll start right now. Hey everybody, welcome back to Photorec.tv. I'm Toby and here I have with me the Sigma 14mm f1.4 DGDN Art for Sony and Leica L mount systems. It is currently the fastest 14mm f1.4 on the planet. I guess I don't need to say f1.4, just 14 millimeters fastest on the planet as of recording this video. The price is set $15.99. Couple other superlatives. Well, it happens to be the lightest 14 millimeter f1.4 for full frame. It also happens to be the heaviest. I think we need a nickname. I like the Beast or Wide Wonder. Both of those work pretty well for me. It weighs in at two pounds, 13 ounces. That's what I got on my kitchen scale. Sigma's official weight is a little bit lower. I wonder if they weigh it without the tripod collar, but the docks that I was provided say you must use the collar or risk lens position shifting because of how heavy this front element is. Speaking of elements, 19 elements in 15 groups in here. And it's all packaged in this lens that is about six and a half inches long. We got about 12 inches diameter out on the outside. You have a host of switches on the side here. Of course, you've got your standard AF, MF switch. You also have a focus hold button, the ability to lock the manual focus. This is a really nice feature. When it's locked, even if you bump the focus ring, it won't change the focus. You have a click, no click switch for the aperture ring. So it can either change smoothly or with nice, satisfying clicks. And on the other side, you have a small switch that will lock this lens into apertures being controlled by the camera dials or aperture being controlled on the aperture ring. Note, you can't use this lock to lock that aperture at any specific value. I think that would be a nice feature, but I could not get that to work. As mentioned, you've got a removable tripod collar with an Arca Swiss style foot. And if you are some kind of animal using Manfrotto, well, there's a screw hole for you to attach your sad little plates. It comes with a rear filter holder. And this chonky lens cap actually has rear filter holders built in. It's kind of cool. Also in the box, a lens heater retainer. Editor Toby here. I realize that the lens heater retainer is just simply the protruding lip on the lens itself. And the rubber band I was referring to is actually what you can use in place of the lens collar or to make the lens look a little bit better. Back to me. The lens is also dust and splash resistant. Now I was able to get out and photograph the stars a couple of times with this lens and it was pretty dreamy. If you appreciate that hard work in this video so far, give it a quick thumbs up. I really appreciate that. Now, before I share the results of those star shooting tests, I wanna do a quick spec rundown and compare it against something that I think many of us, if you're considering this lens, may also be considering this, the Sony 14 millimeter F1.8, which has 14 elements in 11 groups. It weighs in at 460 grams or just over a pound. Now, the Sony is noticeably smaller in the hand and it is about a third of the weight, but it's missing some features. It does not offer the MF lock switch or that aperture lock switch. With modifications, it does accept rear filters. Its price is the same at $15.99, though at the time of this recording, it's on sale for about $100 cheaper. The biggest difference, though, is the Sony is two-thirds of a stop slower than the Sigma. Let's do some quick math. Let's say you've set up for a nice Milky Way shot. You got 10 seconds, F1.4, ISO 1600 is giving you perfect exposure. You wanna achieve that same exposure with an F1.8 lens? You're gonna to need to bump it up to ISO 2500. No, that's not a huge difference, but it is certainly one that's likely to be noticed, especially if you're a pixel peeper and the amount of noise in your image. Remember, if you want your stars as dots, not streaks, you've got hard limits on the length of your shutter speed. So yeah, you're gonna see a difference in the noise. You also are going to feel a difference in weight. I certainly did as I hiked up to the lookout. Let's set aside the weight issue for a second. Using this lens is dreamy. The build quality is excellent. The focus ring is so smooth and responsive. Being able to manually focus was very easy, or I should say manually focusing was very easy. Being able to is a must. That lock switch that allows you to lock the focus and not worrying about jostling it or bumping this focus ring is really nice when you're changing compositions or even just putting it in your bag. It's a nice peace of mind. Quality, the image quality, 
It's impressive. I mean, maybe I shouldn't be impressed. After all, it's clear someone at Sigma was like, let's make the best astrophotography lens out there. Don't cut any corners. Don't make any sacrifices. And here's what they say in their press release that I think applies specifically to astro. Advanced aberration correction is achieved at max aperture throughout the entire image with emphasis on infinity focus tailored for starry night scenes and in particular sagittal coma flare which distorts the shapes of stars has been carefully corrected and even at the widest aperture the lens delivers high image reproducibility right to the periphery of the image. Ghosting and flare are thoroughly addressed through both optical designs and coating. This allows for clear, crisp shooting of starry sky and night scenes. That's what Sigma says. What do I say? I do still see a little bit of sagittal coma, a little wings on the stars out at the very far corners. And when I compare it against the Sony, well, actually, it's about the same. So, a lens that's two-thirds of a stop faster, no additional coma, we'll call that good. Center sharpness, I might actually give it a little bit to the Sigma. It's so hard to tell when you're out there manual focusing, but it seems like the Sigma might be a tiny bit sharper in the center. All right, good. I mean, this lens has been designed to be the best astrophotography lens on the market. And at f1.4, there is no competition. But as soon as you start to compare it against other lenses, like the Sony 14mm f1.8, I struggle to be very enthusiastic when you consider the weight and bulk of this lens. But look, if you want to keep it simple, you want to hike out there, you don't mind the weight, maybe you don't have to hike, and you want one single click to capture the lowest noise image you can of stars, Milky Way, Astro, this is it. We also should say this is an excellent lens for architecture. I mean, there's some vignetting on this lens up to about f2. That's easily correctable in Lightroom. I was working with a pre-production lens profile. It seemed a little bit over-aggressive in correcting. The production lens profile may be more uh, gentle, let's say. And of course, you can always adjust after the fact. Distortion, nicely controlled, no issues. And this is a great wide-angle lens for interiors too, though do you need f1.4 for interiors? Overall, no complaints about its performance, and I should throw in there autofocus. We don't usually talk too much about autofocus with wide-angle lenses, but I found it to be silent and very quick and consistent, and that's nice. But I keep coming back to that weight. If you are someone that wants to watch the weight of your bag, you have some other excellent options. You've got the Sony 14 millimeter. Sure, two thirds of a stop slower, but it's one third of the weight about. And then you even have something like the lovely little 20 millimeter F1.8. Of course, it's slower and more limiting with your max shutter speed for star dots, not trails. But there are ways to compensate for that. And, you know, it feels funny to talk about these F1.8 lenses being slower. But they are a little bit slower. You could compensate. You could use a star tracker. You could use stacking. Actually, speaking of star tracker, I've got the move shoot move here. It's a lightweight star tracker. And I was curious how this lens would do on it. Uh, more about the move, shoot, move than that lens. And it did really, really well. Here is a two minute exposure at F1.4 using this lens. And again, a similar one for the landscapes. But my point was you could use one of these other setups and get very good results. It's just going to be more work than a single click that you could get with the beast. So you have options. That's all I'm saying. Last important bit of information, this lens will start shipping later this month, June of 2023. So what do you think? Is it worth the extra weight and bulk to have the fastest 14 millimeter on the planet? How do you like to capture your stars and Milky Way shots? Let me know in the comments right down below. And just a reminder, you can access my post-processing ebook for as little as $5. This is a 50 page, 50 page full color ebook designed to get you up and running in Lightroom, Topaz, Photoshop, it's all covered. It's packed full of tips for more advanced editors as well. All the details are in the link right down below. We've got links to these lenses and that move, shoot, move. If you're interested in more information plus other videos I've done about those things, eh, I'm done. If you appreciated this video, give it a quick thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe along with clicking that little bell to be notified of future videos. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye. <music>